My name is Dave Lotus. I'm with Pixel Specialty Solutions uh, based out of Atlanta, Georgia. I'm a regional sales manager with the company and coming up on actually 20 years, which is hard to believe. I hired on right out of college and this July will be 20 years in the paper business. So happy to be here and happy to be participating in the paper chain talks. So my first question for you is, how did you find yourself in the paper manufacturing industry and what have been some career highlights thus far? Yeah, it's kind of amazing. Like I just referenced, um, coming up on this 20 year mark, it doesn't seem like I've been out of college that long, but it was actually, I was graduating from Indiana University in 2001. And at the time, there were a lot of companies coming on campus to interview. And I had, you know, paper wasn't in my sights, but at the time, the Legacy Mead paper company was on campus interviewing and got through that first round of interviews. And the unique part is the second round of interviews, they actually brought us to the mill site. So we got to go to Chillicothe, Ohio. And, you know, that was my first experience seeing a paper mill. You know, seeing, uh, we actually got to see the the wood yard where trucks bring, you know, the logs in and, you know, get chipped to actual paper machine, getting to see a, you know, a machine that's 300 yards long. And uh, the whole process through the sheeting and the bond room to warehousing and then the finished product actually going out uh, the door into a truck. So it was really an amazing process. It wasn't what I was anticipating. And I think that along with, you know, the people, I met along the way, kind of, you know, sealed the deal. So, you know, I hired on uh, right after that. And, you know, some of the highlights, if I look back at my career, have really been, you know, the diverse geographies that I've got a chance to live in and, and the people along the way. So I hired on in Dayton, Ohio, uh, for about eight months as a sales trainee and not long after was moved to Atlanta, Georgia to work, uh, you know, in a sheet sales territory. And it just kind of evolved from there where I uh, got a chance to move to California not long after we got married and, um, you know, kind of managed our California and West Coast business for several years. Uh, then an opportunity came up to move to Texas, which we absolutely loved. You know, we loved, it was actually hard to leave Texas. I, I don't think we had that idea going into it, uh, but got a chance to move back to Atlanta again, uh, where my wife's family's from. So, you know, all the people that we've met along the way, and I'd say the diverse segments of the business, you know, we've got to work with, you know, forms manufacturing companies, uh, book publishers, inkjet end users, commercial printing, you know, a diverse customer base has really uh, made it, you know, those are the highlights I think of when I look back at my career thus far. That's a, that's a very interesting career journey. Thank you for sharing that. Um, my next question for you is, what are some innovative ways Pixel approaches paper manufacturing? Yeah, it, it's a good question. And it makes me think to the, the different, you know, what goes into making paper and what we're using to generate electricity. And, you know, what's unique is there's also biofuels, which are, you know, waste or bark that we use to power the mills. And we're actually able to sell excess electricity um, back to the grid because of that. But, you know, when I think innovation, I think, you know, really Pixel specific, we have a unique manufacturing flexibility across not only our paper mills, but our paper machines. So our paper machines, they're not dedicated to running only one grade of paper or staying on, you know, one grade for multiple days. We've got that flexibility to run different grades on different paper machines and different facilities that really creates a broad portfolio of products. And that's when I think of that whole bundling, right? What can we do to bring value to our merchant partners? And that's where we're able to bundle products from different mills, uh, facilities uh, to bring that, you know, total experience and value package to our merchant partners. What are some emerging trends in the paper manufacturing industry and how is this industry changing? Yeah, that's, I mean, you got a lot of good questions. The first thing that comes to mind is consolidation. I think that's becoming more apparent year after year as North American encoded free sheet manufacturers. I mean, we're seeing, you know, close to maybe a half million or more tons of, you know, encoded free sheet capacity come out of the market on an annual basis. So I think that's a trend that continues and continues to be talked about. And um, and, and as that process kind of continues, I think manufacturers become more specialized, you know, as demand might change in certain areas, there's more focus on, uh, food grade type papers, you know, packaging materials. I think we've seen that in the last, 
year or two as this whole model to ship, right? I mean, packaging is, you're seeing everyone kind of expand there. And then really specialty materials. Manufacturers are focusing more on those areas. And in the backdrop of all that, I think that the trend is globalization. I mean, it's become a more global um, competitive environment where, you know, North American mills are not the only um, players or, you know, people competing in these different paper segments. Uh, it's not only paper, but the specialty segments as well. So uh, those are the kind of three that came to mind. Consolidation, you know, becoming more specialized and, and just becoming a global economy uh, in the paper business in general. Um, this is... This is kind of a, a, a bonus question, kind of in relation to the last question I have for you. But how do you, how do you specifically, or how does Pixel specifically, sort of educate merchants on, you know, anything from sustainability practices? So when they're selling paper, to have that knowledge, and then also, you know, keeping them up to date regarding these specific trends. Are there things that merchants are doing already, or is is the relationship between manufacturers and, and merchants sort of yield that type of knowledge? Yeah, I think it's really a partnership type approach. So I think the merchants have done a great job of educating, you know, the printers and the end users on not only paper in general, but sustainability, you know, future trends. And that's where as a mill partner, we have to look at, you know, how do we, um, how do we, how do we share that manufacturing story throughout that process? So you know, if it's it's getting face to face and doing paper schools, that's one thing. But you know, we're having to find new ways to to create content, uh, whether it's you know online um, paper making process and sustainability, where people that will probably never get a chance to see how paper is made or actually be on site in a giant manufacturing process can actually go online and see a paper machine and see what happens in a pulp yard. So it's sharing those tools. I mean, it's not something that we want to keep to ourselves. We want to share with our, our merchant partners because they really do a great job of reaching all of the people touching paper on an everyday basis. So it's, it's certainly a partnership there. And I mean, that's kind of the, the, the crux of our business, right? You know, the manufacturers working with merchants and uh, distribution partners. Absolutely. And that's a perfect segue into the last question I have, which is what are some keys to nurturing that relationship between paper manufacturers and merchants? Um, yeah, I think it comes down to people. Um, really, I mean, it's kind of like our everyday lives. I think a successful mill merchant relationship is going to, you know, it's going to be like the relationships in our everyday lives. I mean, you have to be truthful and fair and trusting. You have to do what you say you're going to do. You have to follow through. Um, there has to be a mutual respect for one another. And here's what I think it comes down to is you have to be present. You, you have to really be present. Um, you can ask questions, but you have to listen. And that's, I think, the part that, you know, I struggle with today is making sure that I'm really listening and, uh, and communicating, um, picking up the phone uh, and to actually talking to somebody. I think COVID is a good example of where we've used email and text messaging to contact folks, but actually being able to hear someone's voice on the other end of the phone, I think, means so much more. So working together to understand each other's issues um, and then working out, you know, trying to find out how we can bring value to one another, that will not only build, uh, you know, longstanding relationships, but it'll build a partnership as well. Mm -hmm.